another thing, somebody sent me a link, and it was I, I looked at the uh, the link, and it was from foxnews.com. And again, I reached for the delete key because I figure, oh, this is some fucker who, uh, you know, some uh, Hannity lover or I don't know, who sent me something that's going to praise Trump as if I need that shit. But I, I took another look and it, it said it was a piece written by Judge Andrew Napolitano. Now, I know who he is. He is the resident uh, legal authority on the Fox sewer. I thought, why would why would somebody? And then I read the uh, the uh, the tagline, and it says, "Judge Andrew Napolitano: colon. Despite his impeachment trial acquittal, Trump clearly guilty of a high crime." And then right underneath it, they had a quote from Orwell's book, 1984. The quote is this. The party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. It was their final, most essential command. So I thought, oh, fuck, I got, I got to read this. Here's what Napolitano wrote. The Senate impeachment trial of President Trump ended not with a bang, but a whimper. What different outcome could one expect from a trial without so much as a single witness, a single document, any cross-examination, or a defendant respectful enough to show up? Law students are taught early on that a trial is not a grudge match or an ordeal, it is a search for the truth. Trial lawyers know that cross-examination is the most effective truth-testing tool available to them. But the search for the truth requires witnesses. And when the command from Senate Republican leaders came down that there shall be no witnesses, the truth-telling mission of Trump's trial was radically transformed into a steamroller of political power. And in its wake is a Congress ceding power to the presidency, almost as if the states had ratified a constitutional amendment redefining the impeachment language to permit a president to engage in high crimes and misdemeanors so long as he believes that they are in the national interest and so long as his party has an ironclad grip on the Senate. How could presidential crimes be in the national interest? Here is the backstory. When the House of Representatives voted in favor of two articles of impeachment against Trump, it characterized his lawlessness as contempt of Congress and an abuse of power. The contempt of Congress consisted of Trump's orders to subordinates to disregard congressional subpoenas. Both Republican and Democratic-controlled houses of representatives have deemed such presidential instructions as, in an impeachment inquiry, as impeachable per se. The abuse allegations address Trump's solicitation of assistance for his re-election campaign from a foreign government by holding up the release of $400 million in military aid to the same foreign government. These funds were congressionally appropriated in order to be paid by legislation that Trump had signed into law. Federal law prohibits such solicitation as criminal and prohibits government officials from seeking personal favors in return for performing their governmental duties. The latter is bribery. Because the solicitation that Trump committed was a crime against the government, it is among those referred to when the Constitution was written as a high crime. High crimes are a constitutional basis for impeachment, along with bribery and treason. The evidence that Trump did this is overwhelming and beyond a reasonable doubt, and no one with first-hand knowledge denied it. 
Numerous government officials recounted that the presidential leverage of $400 million in U.S. assistance for a personal political favor did occur. And the government's own watchdog concluded that it was indisputably unlawful. The favor Trump sought was an announcement by the Ukrainian government at the commencement of an investigation of Trump's potential presidential foe, former Vice President Joe Biden. While the Senate was hearing House prosecution managers argue their case and Trump's lawyers challenged those arguments, the New York Times revealed that John Bolton, Trump's former national security advisor, had authored as yet an unpublished book demonstrating that the House case against Trump was true. True because, unlike the senators who shut their eyes and ears at Trump's trial, Bolton saw for himself the presidential tit-for-tat machinations that the House had alleged and, if proven, were criminal and impeachable. The New York Times also revealed the existence of 24 emails sent by Trump aides manifesting indisputably his lawless behavior. But the emails are secret. At the same time, two signal events occurred in the impeachment trial. The first was an argument by Trump's lawyers that every president seeking re-election believes his victory will be in the national interest and thus all presidential efforts toward that victory are constitutional and lawful. This morally bankrupt, intellectually dishonest argument, which effectively resuscitates from history's graveyard, President Nixon's logic that when the president does it, that means that it's not illegal because the president is above the law. This morally bankrupt, intellectually dishonest argument must have resonated with Senate Republican leaders. The leaders coerced their Senate Republican colleagues into embracing the view that since the president did not want Bolton to testify or White House emails to be revealed, they must bar all witnesses and all documents. The second signal event was shameful. It was the 51 to 49 Senate vote to bar witnesses and documents from the trial. Isn't it odd that a president who clamors for exoneration, who claimed loud and long that he committed no crime and did no wrong, who insisted that his request to the Ukrainian president to seek dirt on Biden in return for American financial assistance was perfect, would command the members of his own party to block testimony adverse to him rather than hear it, cross-examine it, challenge it, and thereby obtain the exoneration on the merits that he seeks? Do innocent people behave this way? If Trump really believes he did not commit any crimes and any impeachable offenses, why would he orchestrate blocking evidence? And who having taken an oath to do impartial justice, who would close their eyes to the truth? How could such a marathon of speeches possibly be considered a trial? Trump will luxuriate in his victory, but the personal victory for him is a legal assault on the Constitution. The president has taken an oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. Instead, he has trashed it. Fox Sewer Channel's resident legal authority, Judge Andrew Napolitano. I wonder how that little prick Sean Hannity will deal with this. Well, they 
everybody at the Fox News uh, sewer, it's not news, the Fox sewer, and this filthy Trump administration, they used the same process that Winston Smith was ordered to use at the Ministry of Truth into the memory hole. It never happened. It never happened. Hi, Truth Seekers. It's Kathy Malloy. Only you can help save the life of a progressive podcast. Visit MikeMalloy.com and help us keep it lit through the impeachment, the 2020 election, and beyond.